Do you want to edit your Instagram Reels like a pro using CapCut? In this video, I'm going to show you my step-by-step -step process on how I edit my Instagram Reels that are talking head videos just like this, so you know exactly how to make sure you have really crisp audio, high quality video, how to create the blurred background effect if you are recording this not in an iPhone, how to make your videos pop, and how to add the automated captions, so keep on watching. Now that we are on my desktop, I'm going to go ahead and import the video that I have just saved. So let me quickly find it. It is a video series that I'm doing for my Instagram account and each video is under three minutes. So it fits for all the platforms uh, for the short form videos and you just drag the whole video over to the timeline. So the first thing that I generally do before I actually move on to the editing, I want to make sure that I expand the video a little bit more. So, and the benefits of editing it on a desktop is you can see the pauses and where you messed up, so it's easy for you to edit. Now, the first thing that you're going to do, I always use this one setting which is enhance the audio so let's see where it is so you want to go to the audio on the top right and besides reducing the noise i like using that despite using a really good microphone like i use dji mic uh two and i still still make sure that i reduce the noise and i do the vocal vocal isolation as well and you want to keep the vocal because that makes your sound so crisp and so clear. Even if you don't use a professional microphone, this one professional setting here makes it absolutely worth it for me. Now, this is for the CapCut. Then you have to wait for it to uh, completely isolate the voice and you're going to see such a difference. Okay, so in this case of the video, I want to also erase the sound just a little bit because it's not as loud as I would like it to be. Uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's just my computer sound. And as you can see, the voice has been completely isolated. The noise reduction has been complete. I do like to keep the volume a little bit up because otherwise it's just not as good in my opinion. Okay, so sounds to me pretty good. Uh, it's probably going to sound a lot better afterwards. There are a couple of other settings that you can play with that I don't typically do. Like I don't retouch my face or anything like this. You can, you know, enhance the image if your quality is not as good. The one thing that I do recommend for you to do is always record with the back camera of your phone because the quality is just so much better. I've literally had people tell me, how is your video quality so crisp? And I'm like, it's because I don't use the front camera anymore. So make sure that you do that. Uh, you can enhance the image if the quality is not that great. You can even reduce the, the image noise. Um, you can relight. I did find that this doesn't work as great. Now, once I'm done with the sound, the next thing that I do is I actually go over to the filters and you want to go ahead and find uh, this particular effect. Now, I have it in my favorites already. It typically shows up under featured. Uh, you, can, you can play with whichever one, but it's typically under featured next to focus. Uh, feel free to play with the 4K, whichever other kind of filter that you want to use for your videos. If you have a specific theme for your videos that you're using, I generally like to use focus. The reason that I do this be before editing the entire video is because after I split the clip and remove all of these weird pauses and the parts where I messed up, then you will have to apply it to every single individual clip and you're probably going to forget something. So I just always drag it to the entire clip and you just want to drag it over and let me just show you the difference. So this was the video and you can see it's not really blurred background. Uh, I did not use cinematic mode on my phone for this. And if you move it here, you see how much of a difference it makes. And it changes kind of like the lights. This looks very much brownish, probably because of just the general light that I have in the room. But this makes it look like I actually record on a professional camera in my opinion. So I drag the entire thing all the way to the end. And okay, so I want to stop it here and I want to split the clip right here. And I don't think it did the splitting, so there we go. And then if it stays longer, then you just drag it however much you need, right? Um, so that's the other setting. Now, another thing that you could do as well is if you go over to adjustments, you can also adjust the settings. Uh, so let's see 
how it works on desktop because typically I just do it on my computer. Okay, so a lot of the times, not particularly in this video, but sometimes my face looks a bit too orange or like my body in general compared to the rest of the screen. So I sometimes do auto adjust and it kind of adjusts, well, let's see, this looks fine. It just makes it a bit brighter. Now in this case, I'm not sure I particularly like it. Um, because it kind of makes it look a bit too bright in my opinion, so I don't think I'm going to use it for this scenario, but if it is too dark for you, you can use the auto adjust and just play with it, see how much you want to change it. So we did kind of change it right now a little bit. I don't like it as bright as it is now here, because I feel like it makes my under eyes pretty bright as well, so I would not be using this feature in this particular case, but then you can also play with the temperature. So in this case, my face is actually pretty fine because see, if I make it to the right, if I make it warmer, it makes it very much orange. And if I make it colder, so it makes it a bit colder. So, I mean, depends if you like that kind of effect, uh, like this doesn't look too bad actually, but yeah, for this particular video, we're not gonna do that. So the next thing that I do is I make sure that I trim the video. So as I can already see based on the sound, so my video starts right around here. And then here I also wanna split it. And then I'm also going to make the video a bit bigger so I can easily change everything. And then I wanna make sure there's no weird pauses. I just wanna make sure that it's smooth. So let me show you it on the video. Okay, looks pretty smooth. And then here I also want to split it because then I'm doing the introduction of my video. I'm not sure what that ha what what well, the hell was that. <laughs> okay, let's welcome back to the Okay, now I want to go ahead and add a transition between these two clips where I ask the question, do my intro, and then I actually introduce the video. And I typically like to use for this series, I've been using slide left. And I'm going to drag it right over here. And then you want to check if you need to adjust your clip just a little bit. Change your mind. Welcome back to Actually, it looks pretty good. Now, all the next things that I'm going to do are going to be quite boring. So I'm going to skip through this video and I'm going to um, share with you the next step in just a moment. All right, so I have just got this video down to about a minute and 37 seconds. And as you can see, the timeline has gone all the way down to 225. So what you can do, you can either drag it like this or you can just, I believe you can split that section. Okay, so I just split this entire focus filter and I'm going to delete it. So now it only stays like this. Now the video is pretty much done. I've also added another transition in the end of this video. So it looks just like this. Looks pretty nice. Now the last thing that I do once everything is said and done and edited, the last thing that's on the list is to add the automated captions. Now there are a lot of fancy captions on the pro account. There are a lot of captions on the free account as well. Uh, if CapCut can freaking click on this. Um, so you want to generate uh, auto detect. You want to, I don't need bilingual captions in this case. I always set it to identify filler words in case there is anything so it can delete it. And then you click on generate. And then you simply have to wait for however long it takes. Typically it's pretty quick. And then I'm going to start editing. And sometimes the captions can be a little bit tricky. And I do want to mention one more thing while this video is, you know, processing. So as you can see, the captions are now showing up. The speech is getting recognized. You want to make sure that you, um, like, stay patient with CapCut because sometimes there are glitches in the system. And let's see. So in the beginning, it noticed a pause for less than a second. So I'm going to make sure to delete it. And uh, let's see, there's one pause, then there was another pause, and then there was something, um, collaboration, something that I repeated. So I'm going to delete it and pray for the best. So I want to click and remove the things. And now it doesn't automatically make the caption pretty. So you want to make sure you go to the text and then we are going to start playing with this. Now, when you edit on mobile, it is a little bit different. Uh, let's see. So I want to go over to the templates. Typically I choose a basic template. Uh, so there are some preset styles that you can select from. Um, I like to go into templates and when you are on the phone, 
Uh, it categorizes everything, so it's a bit easier to find here. It's a little bit more complicated. So you want to choose whichever one kind of fits your style better. Uh, I typically like to keep it clean. So there was a template that I was using. I think it was this one. And when you're first, yeah, there we go. That was perfect, actually, uh, because that's the exact one I'm using for this entire series. And then I always make it shrink a little bit because I don't want it to look giant. And then sometimes you have to see, okay, so it changed all of my captions here. It doesn't have any kind of color, so it looks great. The only thing that I have to double check is make sure uh, all the words are accurate because sometimes, so for example here, I already know that I'm saying real serious, so you want to make sure that you change it because sometimes I forget that it doesn't recognize my speech perfectly yet. Um, and then here, I don't like how it separates the number 30, so I'm just going to put it on the next line and then learned. I don't know why it keeps putting it with the capital letter for the entire series, where I'm sharing 30 lessons that I learned before turning 30, and then I'm kind of going to skim through this. Lesson number eight, so I used to hear people say that networking uh, doesn't really matter when it comes to growing your business. It's a waste of time and going to events and you sh uh, shouldn't be doing that. You can grow everything online. And then that's pretty much it. That is usually the last step. I also like to add some animations and some um, like zooming in effects uh, in the beginning of the video. Actually, another thing that you can do just to add like a bam kind of hook. Uh, I like to go into effects and then you're going to find... I don't like the shaky or um, like any kind of effects where it's like a little bit too hard on the eye. I feel like it's a bit annoying, um, like the glow or something like this. Um, but you can also start the video with some sort of effect that's not too irritating on the eyes like this, for example. I, I don't know who would want to use that, but I mean, it is fun, right? Um, let's see, I've used the kind of effects Let's see, landscape close, that could be a good for the ending, so you could add it at the end of the video. Uh, in this case, uh, there was a particular effect that I've used uh, that's kind of fun in the beginning. Vertical close, that's also good for the ending. Okay, so we can actually go into opening and closing here. So the blur effect doesn't look that great, sometimes it looks a bit scary, so I'm not a huge fan on that. So you can actually do this effect. And let's just see how it's going to look like. And I want to make it shorter because that's a bit crazy. So let's see. It looks a bit too much for uh, what I'm doing here. So you want to just try it out and see what you're going to like or dislike. And well, let's see what we can do here. Okay, so I still like to do the opening and closing because it makes a bit more sense. Defocus, uh, practice blur, plain, win plain window is actually fun if you're in the travel industry. Uh, glitch intro, sometimes the glitch intro actually looks like a cool effect, but you don't want to keep it too long. I would keep it for like two, three seconds maybe before my transition. Although that's not, that doesn't look cute. Uh, camera focus, colorful zoom. You don't want to spend too much time on this because it can be quite crazy. So let's see. Okay, so you can either keep it or you can play around with this, see what you want to do. There is a bunch of motion uh, stuff that you can do. Um, just play around with this. I would choose some sort of opening. I don't see the one that I typically use, hence why I'm not selecting any. So I'm probably just going to keep it as it is. And then what you want to do, make sure you double check that you like drag your effect to where it needs to be. That's how you want to make it. And then all you have to do is just export your video. And